Hey guys, thank you so much for coming to watch. And if you're used to my sort of gear videos, pedals, amps, guitars, etc., then thanks a lot for, for coming to watch this completely different type of video. I mean, it's still about guitar, obviously. And the plan is I'm making my first ever guitar, something I'm, I'm really, you know, passionate, passionate about and I've been wanting to do for, for um, a long, long, long time. And uh, yeah, this is episode two. If you haven't seen the first episode, I'll link it up here. That sort of goes into to what I'm doing a little bit more. In this episode, I wanted to take you through the next few phases that I've done. Um, let's start with taking um, the sort of wider neck block, um, the piece of wood that's for the neck, which I've marked out and um, done a little bit of work to, to shape the headstock angle downwards. That was last week. We're now gonna cut those shapes out, uh, or sorry, the main shape of the neck out. Not going to carve the underneath of it in this episode, but mistake number one in this video, we'll get to at the end of the segment, I'll, I'll explain maybe why I should uh, reconsider the way I work a little bit. But um, yeah, let's see how the neck takes shape. So first thing is, I'm really happy with the way that cut turned out. Uh, in the first episode, I used the bandsaw for, for something and it was just awful. It was the blade that came with it and I didn't know what I was doing. In between times, I've ordered a, a much better blade. It's still not an expensive thing, maybe 11 or 12 pounds. So I'm not really sure why the bandsaw manufacturers would not just give a better blade and make their bandsaw look a lot better. But anyway, by the by, I learned how to put the, the new blade in track it all up and everything and it really cut through this a lot better I mean if anything I could have been a bit braver and got a bit closer to the line but it's rule number one do not go through the line you can't really recover the piece if you cut it too small I mean you'd have to just adjust your design I guess unless you went drastically too small so anyway I didn't go through the line but I've left myself a lot of work uh, you know out of caution an abundance of caution at this stage is okay and so far I haven't really made a mistake uh, we'll keep watching on the main bits of the, the actual guitar as opposed to building other jigs and things. So far, learning a lot. There's a lot of precision stuff that I'm not used to doing. Um, but the neck shape is getting there. I'm gonna finish sanding down to the lines uh, this morning, hopefully, or by the end of the day, and then probably move on to the, the body next. Start of day three, the neck, the headstock is over 20 mils thick, and that needs to end up being about 16, maybe 15 and a half mils all the way down the headstock. So, four mils of sanding mahogany is probably going to take me a few hours, <laughs> um, and my hands are, are starting to um, get battered quite a lot. But um, let's see where we get to in a couple of hours. So I'm half
halfway through the day and I've been hand sanding for about three and a half hours off and on. Um, well, this end needs to be 18 mils and it's currently 22. And this needs to be 20 mils and it's currently 23 or four. So the other half of the day may get me there. <laughs> Let's see how we do. So I've done three days of work roughly on this neck so far and it's, it's looking okay I think. Uh, I've done all of this by hand. I've just stuck this pre-slotted fretboard. It would be too much of a challenge to, to have done the whole fretboard myself. Obviously I'll do all the frets and everything um, but just to see what it could look like. Obviously there's a lot of carving on the back. There's a bit more thicknessing to do with the headstock and uh, drill in the tuner holes. Okay, so here's where there's been a little bit of a mistake. It doesn't look like a lot here, but now that I understand the process a bit better, having watched the lessons a couple of times over, um, I got a bit too exuberant here. Now, whilst I didn't film it, um, I was really only supposed to reduce the depth of the piece of wood or the height of it and the headstock. And then I went ahead and I reduced the width of it down to the lines, which is basically where the the, the sort of fretboard will sit on top of. Um, as you can see in the in the image that will come up, it's I've, I've got it so that it's almost flush, which is a little bit silly. Now this might come back to bite me because basically later we would have found the perfect midpoint for the for the um, sort of fretboard to sit on top of the neck and have some wiggle room. And now I've got very little wiggle room. Um, I've, I've left one side of the neck about a mil or two wider than where the fretboard is. The other side, I got down to the line before I even thought about it. So it doesn't give me much of a chance if I've mucked this up to center the fretboard properly onto the neck. So, you know, it's, it's something I've, I've um, it's a general lesson for me, which is just to slow down sometimes and consider, do I need to do all of this now? Or is there a reason why you might not get everything down to certain sizes before you need to, right? Because I could have centered the fretboard a bit later in the process when I need to, and then got down to size. Instead, I just sort of charged ahead. So that's lesson number one for me, is don't charge ahead. Don't go in like a bull in a china shop. Slow down a bit. Think about what you're doing. But, um, Hopefully it will turn out all right. If it doesn't, it'll be a major lesson that I've learned that I shouldn't make again. And that's the uh, philosophy I've gone into this with. This isn't a one-off thing. I'm not gonna only make one guitar. It doesn't have to be the best guitar in the world and it certainly won't be. But to learn the lessons is so important. It's a very valuable thing for me to learn these lessons now before maybe I've made several more guitars, got better and better. And one day someone might, you know, hopefully buy one. And by then, you know, I'll have learned how to fix my mistakes. That's the more important bit. Um, Okay, I'm gonna show you now just how to drill the holes for the headstock. This was something I worried about for ages because it has to be really precise. Let's see if I got the precision right. So over that last week, I did a bit more finessing around the thickness of the headstock and I've got it down quite far. It's more like 15 mils. Then I've been working on the thickness here. I'm not gonna film any more sanding or anything like that. I'm just gonna work on this in terms of getting the thickness exactly right which would be 18 mils here, going to 20 mils around here. I'm not gonna work any more on this curve until I get much further down the build and figure out exactly what I need to do. And then I will film, I need to drill the six tuner holes. So I'm gonna actually get the, the, the actual tuners out, make sure they all would fit where I put them, and then get out my drill and try and drill straight, which is again, another new skill. Everything I'm doing is a new skill. It's a lot of fun, so much of a learning curve, which I'm really enjoying. Um, and a lot of satisfaction as you just pick up all these new skills, so many of which, you know, I'm obviously not gonna be doing brilliantly well, but it's amazing by making mistakes, how quickly you learn how not to do things. So let me get this down to the thickness now. And once I've done that, we'll drill these holes and then we'll move on to the soundboard. So I've been doing a bunch of measurements and using lots of straight edges and things. And ultimately you wanna make sure that wherever you put this, I know this is upside down, but wherever you put your tuner, the head can turn and this has got plenty of clearance. And the other thing is to just mock up where your bridge is gonna go. And then I used a ruler and I made sure that as each string would go to where its tuner is, 
um, they're not going to overlap or interact with each other. So the main thing here is actually sort of getting your center line and marking it out at relatively accurately. Um, and then we're gonna get on with some drilling. <laughs> I've actually bought a really nice set of uh, drill bits, but I don't suppose you wanna be bored by that. Just safe to say that a brad point, which is a, a drill bit that has sort of like a sharp prong at the end. Uh, if I can get this into focus. Um, it's going to help you get a really nice proper straight circle uh, without damaging your wood too much. So let's just get on with it. The neck that's going to be it for a while um, we'll come back later when i'm ready to carve and there'll be lots of work to do putting on the fretboard working on the, the frets themselves and obviously probably mucking it up <laughs> you hear lots of stories of people having to start necks all over again even much more experienced people so i've learned a lot so far and i'm ready to to move on to the next big thing Okay, so mistake number two is uh, clearly a sign that I'm an absolute novice when it comes to any sort of woodworking. We were actually instructed on the course that we should get um, all our material down or into our workshop as soon as possible so it could acclimatise to, um, uh, to the humidity and the temperature. Well, my basement was incredibly high in humidity, nearly 90%, so I bought a small dehumidifier and I thought I'd let that work for a couple of weeks and bring it down to 55 or 50%, which is pretty good for woodworking. And so I left the materials in another room and I didn't even leave them particularly flat, just sort of put them somewhere. Well, you're gonna see in a second when I came to actually start on the top of the body, the soundboard, which I was really excited to crack on with, I found an issue that I caused myself uh, let's see what it was and uh, maybe we'll discuss that a bit more. But today I was going to move on to working on the actual soundboard. Uh, this is the inside of the soundboard, but unfortunately it developed a bit of a warp. I um, was planning on using this iron to straighten it out, <laughs> but not sure that's going to work. So I've asked the course instructor that I'm the course I'm doing, Mark Bailey's uh, guitar making course. I've asked him what he thinks. Do I need a new soundboard? Should I attempt to flatten it or can I use it? Maybe, maybe it's salvageable. Anyway, uh, we'll see what the response is and get back to you. Okay, so I heard back from the guys on the course actually the same day that I asked and they said, put it in your workshop, create a little sort of rack and leave it for a while and see what happens. So I waited a full week without working on that. In the meantime, I worked on some more drawings, um, which you may or may not see, but those were drawings uh, for the inside of the body, so where all the sort of bracing stuff goes, um, to give me an idea of the anatomy and where things will be placed. So I used my week to do other things and then uh, get on with, I did my six favorite pedals video and etc. So let's come back, uh, we'll see what happened a week later. So whilst we've uh, designed the outside of the guitar, um, the front of a guitar is actually made of a soft wood, in this case it'll be spruce, a certain type of spruce, and the back and sides are made of hardwood, uh, in this case mahogany. But in order to brace everything and strengthen everything, you have a, a block at one end and the other, 
and then you have all these various pieces that get braced along the front or the back um, inside the guitar. So these can strengthen it but also in, um, in time we learn how to sort of shape each one in order to sort of get the most resonant sounds out of the guitar which uh, turns out to be a bit of an art and a science um, and I've got a lot of reading to do about that but what I'm going to do now is draw all of these onto here so I can place them. Um, I'm not going to show you how I draw them obviously but I'll just show you what it looks like once I've finished. Okay, so I've drawn on quite a few of these braces now, and even I wasn't even sure how many there were going to be, but it's quite a few different places, and I'm not quite finished yet. And these are just the braces that go on the soundboard, which is the front panel of the guitar, so these all stick to the back of that. We've got this X brace that comes across from both sides. We've got a graft along here, another brace along there. We're strengthening each of the side and corner areas then we've got to stick something under the bridge and we've got ones near the sound holes so yeah overall you're really strengthening up that soft bit of um, spruce and then with your blocks as well yeah So it's actually been a week since I filmed the board that had gone uh, sort of skewed and a few hours later I got an email back from uh, the course and they told me to make a sort of rack um, in the workshop where the wood will be kept long term. So I just put together these little boards and everything and at the bottom uh, there I put the rack. In a minute I'm going to take it out, I've literally left it there for a week, I didn't want to move it at all. So we're going to find out if that straightened it out and then I put any other flat pieces of wood that I'm using also in the rack and it just helps to sort of acclimatise it to the humidity um, and then you can see this just how tight of a space but it seems to be working absolutely fine at the moment and uh, all the tasks that I'm doing uh, so let me get this out and we'll see if I have managed to salvage it Is mahogany and under here we've got the soundboard let's see what's happened well it's definitely looking flatter than last week <laughs> because it was not sitting on the rack I'm going to say it's close. We're going to be cutting off, obviously, round the shape here. Um, let's get that backboard away. Okay. So this is the actual front. Okay. I think that's good enough. If I was, you know. 10 guitars down the line and actually planning to sell this thing um, I'd probably just go for a new piece I mean you know this is probably a 50 or 60 quid soundboard um, the top sort of AAA ones are more like a hundred pounds so they're not inhibitively or prohibitively expensive in terms of if you're making it for a client you definitely do the best uh, but for learning purposes, I'm hoping this doesn't cause me too much of a problem. But what's great is now I can get on with actually cutting out the shape from this and moving on with the bracing and all that great stuff. And I've been waiting for a week, just slowly working away on the neck. Um, but I haven't made a lot of progress for a week, which hasn't been, hasn't been fun. So uh, it's going to be great. I can get on with it. Okay, so I'm really pleased that the soundboard did sort of come back to uh, being reasonably flat. I thought I'd leave today's video here. This is going to be a gentle journey, really, and um, it, maybe there's a bit too much detail in certain places, but that's sort of the way I want to do this. Uh, it's more about getting to, to really feel what, what this process is like, because I think for a lot of us, we've been scared off doing these things because there's so many in unknown moments when you're making a guitar and you just think at some point your skill levels are going to run out and I promise you 
that if you take it slowly and you follow the right steps, anyone can do this. Um, you'll see in next week's video, because I've already actually filmed that, more mistakes, lots more mistakes, things that just go completely wrong. And ultimately, if you're safe, um, anything else is replaceable. So that's the important thing to, to sort of think about. You can do it if I can do it. Um, you know, I've made some mistakes already, I've learned from them and I'm happy that hopefully I won't necessarily make those mistakes on purpose again. Um, but yeah, I hope you're enjoying this. Next week, we're gonna cut out the shape of the body from that soundboard and we're gonna work on getting the bracing bits um, cut out and, and figured out and everything. So yeah, we, you know, we're getting somewhere. Um, I'm currently waiting for some more small tools and other little bits and pieces I'm gonna need to do the rosette, which we'll do the following week after that. This is gonna take some time, so um, let me do, know down in the comments what more do you want to know about it? What parts would you like more detail? What would you like less detail? Um, and my next video I film in a couple of days will be my normal sort of guitar gear video, which is probably what you're here for. Don't forget, if you subscribe to the channel publicly and make a comment, you're in to win this flipping fantastic pedal. It's got a clone clone on one side and a blues breaker on the other and it just works really, really well. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.